Tim series in the garden. It's Easter Friday morning and a big huge welcome to you today. I've just um, been uh, loving being at home and in my garden and so that's why the series has been in the garden and once again Easter Friday is no different. I've got a little bit of fruit here that friends have been giving to me. Um, thank you for the apples and the pears, Kathy. Amazing from Kathy's garden and all I've got from my garden right now is still the good old feed jars which are falling off the tree. So gardens are great if you can get some growth and so that's why we're talking about um, in the garden series. Just want to um, mention, you know, also with this season, we're actually in an autumn season right now. And I'm noticing that the leaves are starting to fall off the plum tree, the grapes, the, the leaves are going brown. And right down our street, there are just beautiful colors emerging on all the trees. It's that beautiful autumn um, color that's coming on and it's just amazing. It got me thinking about in the garden, but also thinking about the seasons of the garden. And I got thinking about why leaves fall off trees. And I'm thinking, man, what, that, how can it be so, how do the colors come through? And I, so I did a bit of research and I found out that the trees that lose, lose their leaves that are called um, deciduous trees. And they typically have quite broad leaves, and, but they're not built to withstand the harsh winter climate, unlike you know the evergreens. And so they're not, they're not built to withstand the cold and the dry weather, the strong winds and the heavy rains. So they shed their leaves. And also leaves would be less effective to generate energy when there's less sun and when the days are shorter. And of course with daylight savings going last week, we we're noticing how much shorter the days are getting. And, um, but you could say that the leaves are kind of sacrificed for the good of the tree through that winter period. And they only live a short life so that the tree can be fruitful in the next season. And this got me thinking about the Easter story. I'm thinking, well, it's kind of a, a connection there. Jesus didn't live a long life. You know, you could say he lost his life in his prime, 33 years old. He was a qualified carpenter. He was an inspirational communicator. He was a successful leader. And yet he never went on to capitalize this like you and I might think about our lives, how we can go on. It's so like in his prime, he was cut down and his influence, he had such a great following and a great influence. You know, was that part of coincidence or was that part of a plan? And you know, going back to the garden, as I mentioned last week, Debbie did this great plan for us. And what I love about the plan is that oftentimes I'd be out in my garden and I'd be digging away and be thinking, man, why am I doing this? And I'd go back to my plan and think, oh, that's right. No, it's, this is foundational. We've got to do this. We have to remove the soil, we have to put that wall in. It tends to look messier for a time, but when you've got a plan, you know that the, you look at the, the final vision and you go, well, no, this is, we've got to go through this mess to get to that beauty. And you know, that's been really encouraging for us with our landscaping as we've seen the garden develop. We made a huge mess. We had trucks, as, you, as I mentioned last, we had trucks coming through, we had diggers, we had bobcats, we had drains, we had mud, but it's just produced an incredible result as part of the plan. And I thought about the life of Jesus. You know what? It wasn't an easy life. You know, he had incredible um, blessing upon him, but he went through a lot. And, you know, when he, when he um, surrendered to God's plan, we can see it unfolding. And I thought about Jesus' life. You know, in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that that God would have a plan. And in Isaiah, it says, Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me, said God. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. So, you know, Jesus came on a mission. He was part of a plan to bring justice to all people. You know, all of us, we are seeking purpose and we're seeking justice. And, you know, many governments promise justice, but, you know, it's only God who is holy and perfect. Who can bring true justice. Jesus knew why he was on earth and he knew it wasn't for a long season. You know just before Jesus went to the cross it says you know six I'll read the verse to you it says six days before Passover Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead and here at dinner 
was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Je Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. And you know what an amazing act that Mary did that day. It was an act of beauty. It was an act of honouring. It was a beautiful thing she did. And it reminds me, even as I look out right now on the autumn leaves, there's a beauty coming, even as those leaves are giving up their life. You know, those deciduous trees, they shed their leaves to conserve the water and energy for the oncoming winter harder, harsher period. And the days are growing colder and they're growing shorter and the trees begin to wind down their production. And you know, what actually happens technically inside a tree is it winds down the production of a chemical called auxin. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but A-U-X-I-N. It's essentially the plant growth hormone. And it, that's what triggers the, a process called abscission. And abscission is the process by which the trees, they cut off their leaves for the year. They begin to shut those leaves down. You know, the trees begin to, as the light is decreasing, then the trees sense it and they begin to shut off those leaves. And you know, this is really what was happening in Jesus' life. Jesus knew because the Holy Spirit was preparing. He knew that his time was short. And you know, when Jesus went into, he went into a garden, interestingly enough, and right before he was crucified, he took his disciples to a garden called Gethsemane. And it says in verse 36, then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over here to pray. And then he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed and told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You know, there's a picture here of Jesus. He's in the garden. He is feeling what is coming up. It's the imminence of his death. He could feel, he could feel the anticipation. He, could, he knew that Judas was out there conspiring to betray him. And, you know, he knew... His hours were short. And it was like the life was being cut off from him. And he was surrendering to God's plan. And he said, Lord, if the Father's any way, if you, if you can take this cup from me. But then he said, but not my will, but you will be done. And he did this out of love. And, you know, and right now as we're in autumn, you know, as the darkness is increasing and the oxen levels are declining, all those, all those leaves attracts the, to the trees are beginning to be let go and you know the water and the nutrients in the leaves can no longer flow to the leaves the chlorophyll in the leaves breaks down over time allowing the chemicals to leave the, the leaves and you know but that's when the brilliant colors begin to shine did you know that when the chloroform is cut off the other chemicals in the leaves that have always been there they begin to show their beautiful colors and you know that's like Jesus, you know, he could have, he could have um, called on angels and, and repelled any, any of the, um, the guards in the garden, but he, he surrendered his life. And so we see the beauty of his love shining forth. It's like the beautiful color in the trees. Jesus, you can see the love of God. He gave his life for the world. He didn't hold on to his life. And I think about as we come into this autumn stage, we see the color on the trees that reminds us of the love of God. The beauty of the, of the autumn leaves reminds us of the love God has for each one of us. And it's all part of God's amazing plan that Jesus would come to earth, live in a human body and be glorified, you know, in the love that he shows ultimately to die on the cross for the sins of the world. God's love, it turns bright for our sake. You know, Jesus, he's falsely acu accused with trumped up charges and he's condemned instead of a tr convicted criminal. Do you know that that um, when, when Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor, Pilate said, you're a king then. Pilate said, Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, for the, 
The reason I was born and came to this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again and to the Jews and said, I find no basis of a charge against him. But it is your custom for me release to you the one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, no, not him, give us Barabbas. And you know, so what happened there was Pilate said, do you want to release the innocent Jesus? He knew he was innocent. Or do you want to release the criminal Barabbas? And the Jews, out of their jealousy, they wanted Barabbas to be released and they condemned Jesus. And I thought, isn't that a great picture how Jesus, he died instead of Barabbas. He was punished instead of Barabbas. And it reminds me of myself, you know, Christ took our punishment instead of us taking it. The criminal went free. Jesus, the innocent, died on the cross. Isn't that amazing? For every mistake I've made and that you've made, Jesus has taken our punishment. Even maybe mistakes you or I will make in the future, Christ has taken that punishment. What a beautiful picture. He gave up his life. And darkness was coming across the land as he gave up his life. In the Bible it says, At noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And even when some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. He... Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. You know, the season of a leaf may not be long, it might be six months, but not forever. And our lives are just for a season, you know, and it's all part of God's plan of creation. But you know, the leaves on a tree are sacrificed so the dark winter can be overcome. And you know, Jesus, he lived a shorter life than us so that we could receive full life, eternal life. And you know, Ephesians chapter 1, it says that God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his old family, his own family, by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us who belong to his dear Son, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered us with kindness along with all wisdom and understanding. He's given us everything that we need. And you know, as we come to a close this morning, I just want to invite you to pray with me. We're just going to pray a prayer of thanks to God. You know, he was like that, that leaf from a tree. He fell and he, he, he passed and he died so that we could live. And he gave himself as a sacrifice for us. He was laid bare. He faced darkness so that we could face light. So I, I want to lead you in a prayer today to thank God for what he's done for us. Dear God, thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus, your own beautiful son, to die on the cross. Thank you that Jesus died in my place for all my sins and that he suffered. He was condemned so that I would not be condemned. He was punished so that I would be forgiven. He was abandoned so that I would not be abandoned. I confess that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. And I also forgive those who have sinned against me. Thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit to comfort and strengthen me all for your glory. Amen. So God bless you today. Praise the Lord that he's with us. Praise the Lord that he is bringing fruitfulness in our lives and it's all by his free gift. What he gave, we receive. For God so loved the world that he gave so that we could receive eternal life. God bless you today. Amen.